Value and quality of life are important considerations for cost, benefit, and risk analysis. One of the ways to try to objectively determine the value of a life is to give it economic value through something such as a discounted future earning calculation, which considers how much a person could be expected to earn if they survive a risk or an accident, or the willingness to pay, which is how much a person would be willing to pay to reduce the risk of death. This type of analysis is useful in measuring the costs of accidents, illnesses, etc., but it is of course questionable to define life purely on an economic basis, and there's an unfair priority that's given to those who are expected to have greater future earnings. Principles of beneficence do not always support policies created by this type of analysis. For example, we recently had a very expensive cave rescue of the boys' soccer team in Thailand, even though a limited number of lives were saved. More important in policy formation these days is the consideration of life years saved versus costs saved. So measurements such as qualies or quality adjusted life years, which take into account both the quantity and quality of life produced by medical interventions are important. These types of analyses can be used to help monitor the effects of treatment on patients and determine what to recommend to them. There is a limitation, however, in that this is a utilitarian approach that really only considers health maximization and ignores non-health ways to improve quality of life. Furthermore, there are conflicts with justice and the duty to rescue because qualies will discriminate against older people with the same diagnosis as a younger person since they have less qualies remaining in their lifetime. Qualies also value the quality of life over the quantity of lives in the sense that Quali analysis will always give priority to one person who has 60 qualies remaining versus three people who only have 19 each. All of these techniques that we've discussed in the last few slides are useful for analyzing cost benefits and risk and forming policy, but of course they have limitations. In order to truly make beneficent decisions, principles such as autonomy, justice, and principles of the beneficence itself must limit and guide the use of these techniques.